This week, we're going to be speaking with Brenda Shikwan, street photographer. I was born in Moncton and uh, lived here most of my life, went to school here and uh, always enjoyed photography, but not seriously until probably about three and a half years ago uh, when I took my course with Murasadi. And, uh, and then from then on, took a liking to street photography with all the genre that we learned through the course. Uh, that's the one that attracted me right away. So I fell in love with street photography for the, I find that it's more exciting than other. I don't have probably enough patience maybe for the still photography. Um, I love walking and exploring and the architecture that we can find in the cities and the, the different people that are in the city and kind of documenting a bit of what goes on every day. You have to be in the moment and you have to be really quick to seize whatever you want to say. So tell us a bit about your procedure and your process. What I learned in my course was that you, there are what they say is two types of uh, street photography. There's the fishing and the hunting which a lot of people take to one or the other. Um, I find I like both. Um, I do like the hunting aspect. I find it a bit exciting. Um, you, go, you can go looking for it without creating it. Uh, just shoot what is out there happening. And then there's also the fishing aspect where those are the times where I would like to find a spot with either good lighting or certain colors. Uh, certain things happening, waiting for the moment to happen without creating it, but using, you know, silhouettes, lights, creating maybe like a fine art street photography is what some people might call that. Most street photographers shoot in black and white. You are the exception to that rule, although you probably have some black and white, but most of your work is in color. Can you explain why? When I shoot, I prefer shooting color. I do enjoy black and white. Um, I use my black and white sometimes when it's a very, very either simple, simple photo or a very, very busy photo. Uh, I prefer the black and white to relay the direct message or to portray more, you see more the, the person that could be in the photo and a story. But I've always been attracted more to color. Uh, I'm a warm color person by nature. I love reds and oranges and yellows and everything. Um, so I guess I, I just prefer color. I do have a bit of an, an idol that uh, I've discovered through YouTube uh, called Saul Leiter, who does amazing color uh, portraits and street photography. Um, so yeah, I guess I just, and there's a lot out there that I do look I've had I bought books and I just I'm just attracted to color no, all the no, way that's around. fine no that's perfect so when it comes to going out to photograph street photography do you have a preconceived idea of where you want to take it or do you just go with the flow when I go out and do street photography I it's a bit of both it depends mostly what city I'm in um, you get to know your own city better, of course, than the others, which is Moncton for me. Um, I have certain areas that I will go scout out, check the light. Uh, it is actually, it's an ongoing procedure, obviously, with, when the seasons change, you have to really know your time of, of sun, sunrise and sunset. Um, and then different, different cities have different um, colors also of I love architecture with brick and warm colors like that. Do you find it difficult to inject yourself in people's spaces, in a sense, to document a photograph? Now, some people prefer long lenses and hide behind mailboxes. Some people get right into the mix. So do you have a problem or is it difficult for you to get yourself into the situation of the people? How's that procedure for you? When I go out and I decide if I'm going to, the day, I wake up that morning, it's, the day kind of decides for me the mood that I'm in when I go out shooting, if it's going to be 
close up or not, the mood will decide the lens. Not, not always just the lighting. Sometimes it's the mood that decides the lens. Um, if I think I want to get close to people, it, it, and again that depends on what city, I find it's, it's funny, with my own city, it could, it could be either or. It could be like, oh, I'm comfortable to go up close enough to people. And then sometimes it's like, no, I want to stand back because I feel like I don't want to be seen or recognized. Or um, Again, we have a city where there's been times where I, I found a perfect shot and I just lift my camera and then I, and if they see me at the same time and I get this look and then it's funny because especially with if, it's, if it's with a zoom, even though they're standing far away, you feel like they're right there, and then I will sometimes back down. But then, and then some days I won't. It just depends on the day. So uh, speaking of feelings and emotions, how do you motivate yourself? Especially now it's a little bit more difficult because of the pandemic and all that stuff, things are open air. But how do you motivate yourself to just say today, take my camera, I'm going out there and I'm photographing. What's the motivation for you? So my motivation to do street photography really, um, like any normal human being, some days you are more, more motivated than others, but because I love it so much, I, I will go out there. And then most of the time, once I'm out there, it just, it just happens naturally. It starts to flow, I get excited, um, I see shots, and I, I just sometimes, I probably get photos that didn't work for me because of camera shape because I was too excited. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to talk to a woman, a young woman starting out that has an interest in street photography, what would be your advice to her? If I was to speak to a street photographer starting out now, a uh, woman, which I also encourage any age uh, to go out there. You can start as a child, you can start as a senior. I started in my 50s and I am so glad that I did. And just, I know it's like every other photographer would say, just go out there and do it, but that is basically the truth. Just go out there, maybe start slow, but do it. Uh, start with whatever gear you have, um, and you will get the shots with whatever gear you have. But get out there, and if you're not comfortable to go close up to people, you don't have to. You, you take a bit of a zoom lens, you take a step back, you start off that way and you'll get your own comfort zone and it'll come. It was really exciting for me to uh, invite Brenda to be part of our show because first of all, she's a female street photographer, which is rare. It's, it's not a matter, so it's, it's mostly a male dominated thing. So to have her uh, tell her side of the story on how she approaches thing, things is, uh, is really cool. She's an amazing person. We did two different photo shoots with Brenda. The first one we did uh, just using available light, open shade, and it was really a, a nice, very straightforward uh, photo shoot with her. Mostly headshots, that type of idea, and a few full length, but all in the same light, all in open shade, very similar background. The second photo shoot that we did, we went on another location where I wanted to use a, a really funky background uh, to uh, kind of highlight uh, who she was and again this particular situation uh, we uh, ended up using studio lightings and we started to really play with light uh, yes we were in open shade so we picked a time so that the lighting was very uh, uniform in a sense um, and then all I had to do at that point is play with the lighting from the front from the main light which lit the subject to the back light which lit the background uh, that's why I love the meter, the handheld meter, because it registers, or measures, I should say, the light that falls on the subject, not that is reflected off the subject. It makes a huge difference. And at that point, I can measure how I want to do both. Either I'm using two lights, four lights, five lights, it doesn't matter. And then I can really play with how the uh, image or the final image is going to end up looking like. In this particular case, what I did is I had a measurement for the, uh, the light in the open shade, the light that was falling on the subject. And from there, I used uh, my main light and I overexposed it by about one stop. And then the backlight, I underexposed it by about close to one stop uh, from the, the natural light that was the open shade falling off the subject. So all of a sudden, I've got a variation here of two stops from the light that is actually falling off her. 
And uh, what it does is it makes her stand out of the background and it darkens the background a little bit. And to me, it just does a beautiful effect. Working in open shade in photography, in my opinion, is a really good type of light to work in, but it does cause little challenges that you have to work with. So balancing the light is critical. That's where you can use reflectors, that's where you can use things like that, but in digital photography also, uh, the white balance in this case becomes critical. Uh, that's if you don't use uh, like studio lighting or, or artificial lighting, but if you're just using the light in the open shade, uh, your white balance becomes absolutely important to balance that light so the skin tones are great and all this. In our case, when we were where we were, we started working, everything was balanced, everything was set. Then all of a sudden, as the sun started shifting or moving and coming down, there was a huge, kind of a almost white building across the street that the sun was hitting. And it, it, that building ended up acting as a huge reflector that completely changed the, uh, not the quality of the light because it was a different light and every light you can adapt, uh, but it changed the intensity of the light, which completely um, uh, messed up in a sense uh, my exposures and how I had things set up. So at that point, be very sensitive to when you're working with light uh, or even in open shade, which I, by the way, love um, because the open shade, really good for skin tones and really beautiful for eyes. So you're, by being in open shade, you can really control things and people are not squinting. It's not emphasizing wrinkles. It's not doing anything like that. So it's a really good way to photograph people. So in that case, when that light, when the sun hit the building and it started reflecting back onto our set, everything went out of whack. Everything changed. My exposure was off, everything. So I had to recalibrate and rebalance everything. So now I'm going to share some of my uh, favorite photographs from that particular shoot with Brenda. Uh, we had a lot of fun, by the way. Uh, just a dream to work with, uh, and she's great.
Don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, and especially if you have any comments or questions, uh, we certainly would love to help you out. So take care and see you on the next one.